whole. And it's about the fact that communities can, uh, communities, tech communities can be awesome, even more awesome than this one already is. Um, and I want to inspire you to get more involved. Okay. Okay, when I talk about testers in this, this talk, I'm going to talk about people who are testers in the testing role, but also allies of testers. So people who give, who care, or give a damn about software quality. So if I start ranting about testers, just like stay with me. Okay, um, this is an icebreaker. What we're going to do is make everybody super uncomfortable and get everybody to stand up, please. Okay, there's, uh, there's something in it for you, I promise. Okay, so if um, what you're going to do, right, is we're all standing up right now, even me, and if you think that the statement I'm about to say is true, you're going to put your, your hand out, okay, whatever way you want to, and um, yeah, and then you're going to say standing, right? Um, everybody else who doesn't think it's true, or is, if it isn't true, then you're going to sit down. Does that make sense? I don't know. Let's find out. Cool. Are you a tester, or do you care about software quality? If that's true, stay standing. Cool. So, okay, so sit down if you don't care. <laughs> nice. Nice, brave people. That's beautiful. Okay. By the way, the last one standing wins. Okay. Have you ever been to a Cape Town testing meetup event? No, you, you are at one now, so you can keep standing. <laughs> Okay, have you been to one before? No, you can sit down. Okay, those of you who are still standing, do you have knowledge of the fact that we ha have a community Slack space? Slack space, yeah? Okay, stay standing, well, well done. Um, do you have knowledge of the fact that we run casual monthly hangouts for our community? Okay, these are the A students, right? Have you ever met somebody new at a Cape Town testing meet meetup? Okay. Have you ever contributed to a meetup before? So any, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> so that means from like, contribution means like a lot of things. So it can be from asking a question, asking a speaker a question, or playing a game, or running a game, or giving a talk, or maybe helped at reception, for example. Jeez. Okay. Maybe I'll have to give out a lot of prizes. Okay. Have you ever contributed before a meeting? So had to do homework in preparation for a meetup? If you haven't, ha have a seat. Um, let's not, let's, let's not include RSVPing. Sorry, bro. Question, next question is, have you made a friend at Cape Town Testing? All right, let's move on. Um, are you on the Cape Town Testing Community Slack space? If you aren't, have a seat, okay? Have you ever posted in Slack? Sorry, have you ever posted in Slack? Uh, either, cool. Now, have you ever posted publicly in Slack? Just got you. <laughs> okay, how often do you engage with the Community Slack space? Okay, and I'm going to count it down. Like, so, do you engage with it monthly? Uh, if you do, then stay, st stay standing. Um, around, is that fine? Chris, are you the last one standing? Wait, Wapela is still there. Wapela, you got to sit down. You're a planner, bro. <laughs> okay, who's left? Put your hands up. Okay. Okay. Who? Okay, Chris, just come and get it and give it to somebody, please. <laughs> Make a friend. Okay, now we're gonna do that, but like the opposite of it. That, that was like the positive version of that um, of that exercise. Now we're gonna do a negative version. So I'm sorry, but everyone's gonna to to stand up again really quickly. Okay, are you on the Cape Town testing community Slack space? If it's true, then sit down. Okay, still the last one standing wins, right? Um, now the people that are still standing up, do you want to increase your contribution or your connection to the community? If it's true, sit down. 
Do you want to strengthen your connection with the community? With this community? Okay, a lot of oddness people. Okay, Chris, will you just throw this at one of the people still standing, please? Okay, that was just a little aside. Okay, moving on. Okay, everybody, that's my dad. Hi, hi, Matthew's dad. Okay, the reason I bring up my dad is because this is gonna sound random. Thank you for the distraction. Um, but last week I broke, at the, only last week I broke my rib, or I, I fractured my rib. I, I fell down some stairs. It was silly, yeah? But uh, I spent the rest of the week just lying at home um, on pain meds, and it gave me a lot of time to think about the coming talk that I'm about to give, which is right now. And it made me think about my dad, because my dad had a lot of broken ribs. When, when I was going to high school, he, every year or so, he would come home from a bike trip, and we'll get into that, and he'd have broken ribs. He's broken multiple ribs and, and re-broken the same ribs over and over again from these bike trips that he does, because these bike trips were pretty dangerous. Cool. Um, the bike trips that he does, it's, it's uh, like a phenomenon or whatever called adventure riding. So we're going to do a quick interlude and learn about adventure riding. Adventure riding is when you get a whole bunch of gear and you get a whole bunch of your friends together and a motorbike and big jackets and knee pads and stuff and bags and you pack all that stuff onto, the, onto your bike and off you go. Okay. Uh, my dad bought, well my dad got me and my brother and him uh, the same bike so we can share tools on this thing. So if we ever do break down, we share our tools. and. So it was a cool father and son thing to do. We see cool things, see cool places, take cheesy photos, take more cheesy photos, um, break down a lot. On these things, uh, like a, a tire punctures, like run, run, run for the course, uh, maybe once a day, maybe sometimes even twice a day, you get a tire puncture and have to take your tire out and replace it. You go through cool river crossings. Sometimes it gets pretty deep. You can everybody see? I can't do anything about it, so whatever. <laughs> and then you get to nighttime and you camp either on the side of the road or, or whatever your budget allows. And um, this is kind of what the odometer looks like at the end of the day. It's like 250 or 300 uh, kilometers per day. So it's pretty, pretty hectic. And there's a lot of danger involved. There's a lot of off-road uh, stuff going on, okay. So, why do, I, why do I bring this up? Okay, it's because, um, to me, when I first started, uh, when, my first, when my dad first got me my bike, I didn't know what I was doing, okay? I was just trying to learn the basic controls of the bike. Um, so I, cut, I felt quite isolated, quite alone. Um, yeah, after I learned my basic controls, then I kind of started to notice my dad and my brother. They were able to give me advice, okay? There were two more people in my community. Can you see where I'm going? Um, so, what they told me, one of the examples of the things that they told me is that I should sit further up on the bike because my, my, my center of gravity was off. So, I did that and that's something that they saw me doing wrong and they were able to tell me, okay? And then over time, as you go on more trips and uh, you talk about it more, more people think it's cool and they want to join you on these things. You can see there's a brand, there's like another green bike there joining us. And soon you have a, a like a big group of friends, okay? and and this I would, yeah, this is, uh, this was my community. One of these guys, the guy on the far right, taught me about power sliding. Okay, does anybody motorcycle? Okay, off-road motorcycle, leave your hand up. Okay, pa yeah, thank you. Um, whoa, sorry. So, power sliding is going around the corner as quick as possible. I went on one of these trips with uh, this crew and um, I, go, I used to go around the corners really, really slowly, still pretty slowly, um, but I, re I re saw in somebody else that they were going around the corner really, really quickly and I couldn't figure out why, so I asked them and they told me, it was like, oh, you just got a power slide. I have no idea what this is, right? So what power sliding is, is here's a GIF, so that's fun. <laughs> you lower your gear and you gas it as far hard as you can so you lose traction in your back wheel. Remember, you only got two wheels on a motorcycle. So you lose traction completely on your back wheel and you just give it everything and you stay upright with your front wheel um, and that gets you around the corner as fast as possible. So it's quite an advanced technique, but
but I was only able to learn about it or hear about it through um, my community of bikers growing. Okay, so that's me. Um, I I think that testing is a lot of the, is a lot the same, or any craft that you that you want to get better at. Um, what I mean by that is that when I started in testing, I was a finance major. Yep, and I didn't know anything about testing. I just knew some business context and some. Oh wow! I just knew some business context. So once I got through the basic controls of. Um, of testing after two or three years, I started to get bored and started to plateau. Um, and, and this might happen to you, you know, uh, when you just stop learning things and you just start performing and, and your day job just becomes a boring uh, performance, right? Um, and it turns out, uh, this TED talk by Eduardo uh, uh, Bricenio called How to Get Better at the Things You Love, he talks about how you have to be deliberate about heading into the learning zone and getting better at the things that you like or that you want to get better at. Now, I wasn't doing that. I wasn't deliberately spending time in, a, in the learning zone that, that he talks about. I just got lucky. And I got lucky through work, thank goodness. I went to this conference called Let's Test and I got my mind blown by these, by these guys. They gave me um, Test of Pride or the, the, a glimpse into Test of Pride um, and I was filled with inspiration. And they saw me, and I saw them, and I was able to learn new things from them. Um, and it, it made me think about uh, why, am I a, why am I a tester? Have you ever thought about this? I, I only thought about this when I started writing this talk properly. I don't know. Well, I didn't know why I'm a tester, so I, I really encourage you to really think about it. And the reason I'm a tester is because at least from my point of view, tester is a black sheep role, okay? Um, does anybody agree to, to feel that, yeah? It's a black sheep role. People don't expect you to be a valuable member of the team for some reason, or some companies don't even hire testers. So in my mind, I was like, bring it on, I love this. Like, I will be this thing and I will be, the, I will be good at it because I've learned pride from these people that I've seen before in, in at Let's Test. and. And, and I will learn to swim, and I will. And by the end of it, you will you will not be able to do without me. It's about it's not about being a superhero. It's about standing up for a role that is valuable, that can't, that no other role in team can do. So uh, I was super inspired by Let's Test, and I I couldn't wait another year to go back to Let's Test or hope that my company would allow me to go to Let's Test. So I wanted to. Do bring that feeling back home. And, and I wanted to have it more than just once a year. So, start a meetup, right? Easy. Um, when, <laughs> when I thought about my meetup, uh, or this meetup, not my meetup, um, I thought about this TED talk. You can tell I've been watching TED talks. So this is Simon Sinek and he talks about how leaders inspire great action. And, and he says that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. So I thought about the whys, and then the hows, and then the whats. And it led me to, um, it, it led me to think about what Cape Town Testing is meant to do, right? And we have this motto, uh, this logo or slogan called make friends, make quality people. I think that's how we get things done. We get people to make quality software and, or learn how to make quality software and um, make friends with each other. But why we exist, what Cape Town testing exists to do is, is a bit of a, a weird one, even for me. Um, so, uh, this is what I came up with. Let me know if you agree with it. So, I think that Cape Town testing exists to fight for you, the tester, and keep you sharp. Okay, give you inspiration and different technical tools that you can look into and articles that, and, and cutting, edge, cutting edge technical uh, testing things that you can sink your teeth into. Keeps your finger on the pulse, so articles and news and uh, like international testing trends. And it makes testers and Cape Town proud to be testers and creates a stronger bond between them. Okay, um, I wanted to give, I want to take uh, past me's and give them, give them inspiration. So like Let's Test gave me inspiration, I wanted to share that same feeling with people that maybe didn't have, I'm not saying I have my eyes open, I'm saying my eyes are like a little bit more open than some people. And so I wanted to do that for other people. OK, 
okay, other opportunities of a community. Okay, we talked about the test of pride and that when I say this too shall pass, I mean that it mustn't only be once a year. Other opportunities of a community are uh, you learn to know through conversations with other people around you what you do know and what you don't know and so that you can target the things that you don't know. Um, like I said earlier, you keep your finger on the pulse of, of, of like vetted or uh, quality sources. Testing is evolving, so testing doesn't discriminate against a good idea, uh, and it's just it's as, as much art as, as it is science. So if you have a great idea, we can use this platform to share it and, and, and share it with the rest of the world. Make friends, of course. Oh yeah, and like, this is what people think that meetups are for—is just to learn something and teach something. Um, but that's just one of the many things to do. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's this quote from uh, from Troy um, by Achilles when he's standing on this boat, and he's like, "I'd rather fight beside you than an army of thousands." Do you know what's over there, waiting beyond that beach? The beach is Troy, the beach of Troy. So they're gonna go kick some ass there. Immortality, take it, it's yours. And what I'm saying now is that there are more opportunities than we think there are here, right, in this room right now. We have a certain level of engagement and it's, in my opinion, not high enough. And it's not for me, it's for you. I'm just gonna leave it there, cool. So I'm saying take it if you want it. Sorry about the sun being in your eyes, just bear with me, okay. And the way that we do that is with our guiding light. As I said earlier, we, sorry? Yeah, there's the guiding light, yeah? So we make quality friends and we make quality software and, and that, that's the hows and the reason we do that is because you can't be proud of, um, we can't be proud of this community that we're in unless we're good at what we do. Okay, so that's why we're trying to get people to, to be better at what they do. Um, if we don't question products better, if we don't find ways to question products better, and we don't solve business problems, then there's no reason for us to be here besides the food and booze. Cool. And then uh, Cape Town Testing has a, a, a code of conduct, right? Because this has to be a safe, respectful sp space that people can fail in. I just want to talk about the structure of the community, like what happened, what is happening around you right now. So as you know, there's you guys and uh, the community, and then there's planners. The, sm the planners are like five or six people, and they found themselves by accident. One, one of these meetups, I put a, a, a sign-up form at reception, and some people signed it, and I was surprised, and, and now we're friends, you know, and we, and we put this thing together, and I don't have to, like, basically skip work for two days every quarter, because I'm trying to get all the stuff together. Really, really awesome. Oops, this is working. Okay, cool, then there's everybody else. And then, the, ooh, oh, and the difference between everybody else and the community is that we consider the community members to only be com community, mem community members when you're on Slack. We use Slack as a channel to like, communicate and make all the plans that we, we, we're trying to do. So if you don't get anything out of this talk besides this, this is join Slack, please. So we can keep in contact between the quarters. You're not gonna learn anything tonight. Um, no 20 minute talk is gonna give you what you need, uh, uh, like, you know, learn you, uh, teach you a new skill. Um, <laughs> it has to be a prolonged connection between friends on a, on a platform like, like Slack that we can organize these things. So to us, Slack is really, really important. It's how we pull the community into the planning zone. Okay. Cool, I just want to mention Malusi. Where is he? Hey, dude. <laughs> so Malusi, at the same time I'm, as I'm saying, and you can kind of, feel that I'm, I'm trying to get you to like uh, connect more with the community. I want to be um, also realistic about it. Like Melissa is being realistic. He knows that he's heading to a hard time and he's served many years or well, two years on the community, on the planning committee and he's he's recognized that he's he's going to step out of the planning committee but he's still going to be part of the, the Slack group and the Slack community and that's, I, I just want to like, can we give Melissa a round of applause for his years of help? Thank you, man. Okay, this line here around the planning circle, we want to dis destroy, destroy, that's the word. Okay, we want to destroy, and we want to bring the stuff that's behind the scenes, there's a lot of like hustling behind the scenes, we want to bring all of that stuff to in front of the scenes, and we want to share that with everybody. 
Okay. And then there's the what. Oops. Then there's the what of what what we do. What we're doing, what we do is what we do right now. Okay. We we produce meetup events and we produce the monthly catch-ups and we get people to talk and we get food and we get drinks. Right. That's what we do. That's that's not something to buy into. That's just like a byproduct of of, of who we are. Okay. Okay, so that slide almost broke. It did break. Can do this. Okay, what this was meant to be was a word cloud of things that you can get involved with, but Bradford is stuffing it up for me. All right, <laughs> that's okay. So on the top right, I highlighted Slack conversationers. And on the bottom left, I highlighted talk givers. You can't see all of the words, but basically there's a lot of things to get involved with. Anything your time will allow, anything that your, your passion will allow, you can, you can grab and take and, and, and run with. Um, but on the one side of the spectrum is literally replying and sharing cool articles on Slack. We think that's a huge thing in terms of a, a community engagement. But um, on the other side is, is giving a talk. And what I was trying to do here is show that giving a talk is just one of the many, 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 and like I put it down 51 ideas here, many ad things that you can, you can get involved with. And you don't have to do it. If somebody told me I was going to speak at Cape Town Testing a year ago, I would have loved to do OK. Right. So I want to talk about this quickly. This is something that we use as planners to come up with ideas of things to do at the meetup. Uh, this is a heuristic that game designers use to sell games. Okay, They make sure to cater for each of these quadrants, and when they do, there's something fun for any mood that you're in or any, any person that's playing a game. Okay, So this is something that we try to do. So if you look around the room, you might be able to put activities that we've put out for you already into the different quadrants. Okay, What's going to happen is this big white board on my... Um, that side over there, my front side, I guess, um, is going to have these quadrants. And what we're going to do is, on the way out, when we give, normally give feedback, we're going to um, put ideas that you guys have up on, in those quadrants. And then you'll see them at the next Cape Town Testing meetup or in the future. I get a lot of energy from, from, from coming up with these cool ideas. Gracious. Cool. So I've talked to you about why Cape Town Testing exists how it does what it does and what it does, because you're experiencing right now, but what does that mean? Um, and what I want to kind of ask you is what, is what has held you back from, from contributing in the past? Why haven't you run a game? Why haven't you joined Slack? Uh, and be honest with yourself and be honest with us if you, if you can. And put that on the list on, on the whiteboard as well and let us know, because this, this thing is not for me, it's for you. Um, yeah. That's what I just said. Okay. And my challenge is to level up your journey. So it's a journey. It's not, it's not OK, I'm going to join Slack, and that's that. Maybe you'll join Slack this quarter, and next, next quarter you'll, you'll plus one your, your involvement. So I challenge you all to, to, to commu uh, co connect in, in any way you can. OK. So the takeaways from this talk is don't fracture your ribs. That's like rule number one. Uh, your communi co community connection is for you. Uh, and it's time, I think, to, like, to level it up a bit. And any ideas that we, we, we crowdsource on, on this um, rubric that we're going to put up, uh, we'll, we'll share with you on, uh, on the Slack channel. Cool. There's some references for you. And I'll share these slides. Actually, they've already been shared on um, the GitHub repo. And there's one prize. Oh, there's two prizes left. So the, the, next, the next three people to join Slack tonight will get, well, yeah, get one of these prizes. Yeah. Cool. So there are links around the place. Um, so join in. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, in the spirit of running with the idea that we are, what's one really impactful thing you've learned from this community that you've been able to apply at work, if any? Um, so when these things happen, I don't normally actually listen to the talks because I'm like running around or doing something else, right, or sorting sorting out the next activity out. 
Um, I would suppose it's from my side as like a, maybe the person who um, not founded, I would say like maybe uh, tried to formalize this community because this community existed before I came along. Um, the one thing was yeah, sp getting a getting a team together and trying to drum up something <coughs> awesome and something fun for everybody, and you're seeing it in front of you now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks very much, Matt. I hope everybody's really enjoyed that talk. I know I have. And we've got a little something to say. Thank you for always putting in an effort and for like being the catalyst for a thing that has the potential to be really, really awesome if everybody just levels up their journey. Cool. Thanks, Matt.